Hi, and welcome to Cord Bot Class. My name is Bill. I'll be uh, taking you around on a little tour of the Cord Bot just to start off with. Um, and there's going to be a series of videos that are going to uh, hopefully help you enjoy your Cord Bot even more. Or, if you don't have a Cord Bot, we'll help you decide whether you would like to purchase one. Anyway, um, the first step, I think, is just to kind of go quickly over all the connectors and features. So this is the back of the cord bot. And as you can see, there's a 9 to 12 volt DC power input. That's center positive, should be at least 500 milliamps. USB is a standard device connection. So you can connect this to your computer, or I've actually connected it to my tablet. Not that the tablet's that fast, but anyway, we have MIDI out, which goes to standard 5-pin MIDI DIN connector, and the MIDI in. And over here we have the foot switch, which is like a sustain pedal. Um, it's a, we'll get into this later, but it's basically a mono plug, and uh, you can get an adapter if you have the quarter inch size foot switch. So last but not least, there's the pedal. The pedal is more like a volume control, but it's used to control MIDI continuous controller messages. Um, and those have different values, so you can get like a wah-wah pedal and attach it, or a wah-wah effect if you attach the pedal to it. Um, Cordbot also has an SD card on the side. Let me switch this over here. It's just a standard 4 gig size. I use SanDisk. Um, this is actually an 8 gig card, but I'm only using 4 gig of it. And we'll cover that in more detail too. There are features in the CordBot that allow you to format and set up a system disk and save settings. But first, this is the initial play mode. <coughs> screen that you'll see once you boot up the cord bot. Over here is the USB connector connected up and this is the MIDI DIN output here that I have connected up for demonstration purposes. Um, once you plug it in, plug the cord bot into uh, a computer, the screen will pop up. So this is the main menu screen, as we're fond of calling it. When you're on the screen, you can actually use this touch strip to set the brightness of the LEDs. So you'll notice they're really bright now, and I'll probably leave it there because the video isn't going to pick it up if I leave it down here. But they're still on. They're just really dim. So you might be working in a low-light environment where you want to dim them or a high-light environment where you want to make them brighter. So that's the only place that you can set that. Let me talk about the controls. We have a lot of buttons here, and we got some knobs and the touch switch, which you just saw. The main interface that you're gonna be using is obviously the TFT display, which will help guide you through all different menus. Right now, we're sitting on the play mode menu. This encoder will allow me to turn it and switch to different features like the file manager. Sequencer is coming. We do have file manager stuff where you can mount an SD card, format the SD card, create a CordBot system disk, etc. Some settings menu, oops, wrong knob. Settings menu will allow you to do all sorts of things like uh, set up the USB MIDI in and out, the uh, MIDI DIN in and out. Um, there's a couple of builder screens in there and there's going to be more features added there. But right now you can set up and create your own scale. You can also go in and create your own arpeggio patterns. That's volume or velocity, um, pattern, which is the sequence of the notes, and then rhythm, which is kind of like adding a swing effect. And you can do all that in the settings menu. Last but not least, we have an about screen, which is nothing more than a scrolling display thanking some people and, and credits and whatnot. So that's it for the display. The actual buttons that are over here, the little round ones, we call those the chord modifier keys. 
or mod keys for short. Basically, in two of the modes, those will be chords or those will allow you to select chords to play. These are the note keys, which in certain modes will just tell which chord you want to play. So for instance, if you wanted a C major chord in the key plus mod mode, you'd hit the C in the major. In the diatonic mode, this becomes a polyphonic keyboard, and these seven keys on each row become preset chords, which you can change and modify and create user chords if you want. So those are for chords mostly. There's one mode where those are just notes. That's the polyphonic keyboard mode. But most of the time, these are for chords. The note keys, of course, are for notes, either indicating what you know, chord you want to play, the root, as they call it, of the chord, or actual musical notes. Up here we have mem pads, or mem keys. What those do is allow you to store chords. So in any mode, you can create a chord and store it in there. The nice thing about polyphonic mode is that you can actually create your own chords. So if you wanted a, a strange chord that was a C, a G, a D, you could create that and store it to one of the memory pads. You can play them back and they uh, respond to the arpeggio as well. The last row of buttons is what I call the control keys or the function keys. There are four function keys labeled F1 through F4. You get four more when you hit shift and four more when you hit alt and then four more if you hit shift and alt. Not all the features are enabled in that yet, but we'll get there. So you have four function keys, a shift and alt. Then you have a check mark and an X mark. Those are mostly for OK cancel. If you get a dialog box up and or you're in a screen where you're setting up a scale or something and you want to save it or cancel what you did, you can do that. These last two buttons are generally used as octave up and down for the three different sections of the keyboard, the notes, the memory pads, and the chord modifier keys. So you could raise the octave or lower the octave with these buttons. On the mem pads, if you store a chord, and let's say you stored it as a C in the octave three major, and you want to make that go higher pitched, you can actually use the octave keys on the memory pads to raise the pitch for all of them. The same thing with the chord modifiers. If you're in diatonic mode and you think the chords are too low, you can raise the octave and play in a different octave altogether. Um, the non-button controls, there are uh, two groups of four encoders. We generally refer to them as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H encoders, just for simpler reference. If I say hit the H encoder button, then you know to go to that one and press the button. Um, encoders can be turned and clicked. The last control device is this control strip, which I've shown you already with the LED display. And right now, that only has two functions, one which is here, setting the brightness of the, dis the LEDs, and the other mode is in what we call our diatonic strum mode, which, more about that later. So, the first thing you want to do, of course, plug it into your computer, wait for it to boot up to this screen, make sure you've got a, either a MIDI device connected or you're in some uh, application that responds to USB MIDI, and then you're ready to go. Uh, the main screen that you'll be using is the play mode screen which if you're not already highlighting in red you want to highlight the double note icon there and then just press the encoder bingo this is the screen that controls all the play modes <coughs> the play mode is in the lower right hand corner here we're calling this key plus mod mode because that means you need to hit a key and a mod key so as you can see this key is already lit up so all I have to do is hit a note key and I get an F major chord, a B major chord, a C major chord if I want to change to a 9 suspended fourth. And the nice thing is you can hold this key down and change the chords here too. To save chords in the key plus mod mode, it's pretty simple. All you do is you play a chord, and then
and then you hold the shift key and press the memory key that you want. Now it's stored in there and you'll notice the memory, or well, maybe you won't. I get that dimmer. <laughs> yeah, I can't show it to you. The LED on the mem LED is lit up so that it, it's letting you know that you're storing information in there. I'll These don't do anything because they haven't had anything stored, but those do. Uh, if you want to get rid of a cord, you hit the X key in the memory pad and it no longer has the cord stored. Um, some of the quick fun features you can do is the cord spread. So you'll notice that I've only got three notes. If I turn up the chord spread, I get more notes. If I hit an F key, F1 through 4, I will get inversions. These play in what's called the root mode. This is the first inversion, second inversion. There's no such thing with a major chord as a third inversion, but we just go up the octave. For the more complex chords, that will make a difference. There's different voicings that come out nice. Alrighty, anyway. I could play for hours on this thing. That's just the basic overview. So what you can do in this mode is you can pick a note, a chord note, F, and a chord type, minor 7th. Um, I guess I should mention one thing. You notice how short this is. The notes go away really quick. This control, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, encoder G has a function that's called chord hold length. And if I turn that way up, you'll notice something different. The chord stays on longer. That same encoder, if you turn it all the way down, you'll just get a bare blip. So we have a chord hold feature. You click the button on that encoder, then as for as long as you hold it, it will sustain as long as your sound on the synth is sustaining. I mean, and then if you add some chord hold time to that, when you let up, the chord will ring a little longer. So there's just three different knobs that will give you quite an endless variation. In different sounds. <clears throat> now to get out of the play modes, it's pretty simple. We're going to go use the uh, function keys here. We hold the Alt key and you'll notice the bottom line of the display here starts with exit. And then it has diatonic, diatonic, strong, and poly mode. Poly mode, polyphonic mode. <laughs> Can't read, don't have my glasses. Anyway, when you hold the Alt button down, that menu pops up and allows you to switch modes or go back to the main screen. Either way you want to go. If you may, maybe you want to go change the setting or something. So you can jump out and do that and then go back into play mode. But let's say you want to go to diatonic mode. So there's diatonic mode. This is F2. I hit that and I'm in diatonic mode, as is indicated here. Diatonic mode, like I said, the keyboard is now polyphonic. But these keys are all different. They're diatonically related chords. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you can now ignore the letters printed on the keys because they no longer matter. You'll have to check your display. If I hit this, it's a C. I'm going to turn this back up so it sustains a little longer. It's a C major chord. Now in the C major diatonic scale, your chords are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G seventh, A minor, 
and D diminished seventh. So that's what we have. C, D minor, E minor, F, G7, A minor, and uh, B diminished seventh. So now you've got related chords. You have four different rows. This one is in C major and the default that this is G major. This is A or D, excuse me, D major. And this would be A major. The reason we did that is there's a thing in music theory called the circle of fifths. These are the first four in that sequence. So you'll notice that if I go one, two, three, four, five, that fifth chord is a G seventh. So the first chord of this is a G. The fifth of this is a D. Verse of that one's a D. A, A. Whoops, sorry. A, A, and E. But anyway, so you could do some interesting things like, uh, you know. melodies with chords with one finger and again you can store these chords whatever they may happen to be so if I wanted to store the F into the mem pad I can if I want to do an A because I'm writing a song or something I can store that here Next mode I'm going to look at real quickly is the polyphonic mode. These are all notes, and all these are notes. So every mod key is now a note, and all the note keys are notes just like before. So you can play polyphonically. Um, you can play usually you'll probably be using these with software that is going to decode a MIDI note into some action like playing a drum pattern or something um, but you can always use it just to play bass if you want to it's a little bit tricky because these are chromatically related and there's only eight so it gets a little confusing but they're there you can do whatever you want. Be creative. <clears throat> and uh, like I said before, if you don't like the octave, you can change it down to a certain level because this lowest note is going to dictate how low everything can go. All right. I mentioned saving chords. Do them slightly differently here. You have to hit Shift M1 first. And then... You type in the notes, you hit the M pad again, and then the next time you go to hit the M pad, it's going to play those notes. It's going to play those notes. I can turn down the octave, and you'll see F, C, F, A, and E flat are the notes I hit, and you can see the lighting up. Now, the neat thing about this is I can type those in in any order and use the arpeggiator, and it will play back up the notes in the order that I entered them. So, as a quick example, if I start on C here and go down, well, if I play that as a chord, it's going to sound kind of weird. But if I turn on arpeggio mode, it's just going to repeat that pattern. Now, the fun part is if I change it to down, It's still following my pattern, but it's changing it to up, down, down, up, whatever. If I change the order 
of sequence with the ARP pattern So there is just a thousand and one different ways that you can use that mode. All right, so I've uh, the last uh, mode I want to look at is the diatonic strum mode. So that's F4, and now I am in exactly the same mode. This is a C major. This is a, a D minor, E minor, F, just like the diatonic mode. And these are still polyphonic. you'll notice when I hit these I don't get anything yet. That's because it's strum mode. Now I've got it set on the pattern from the other demonstration, so I'll put it back to zero here. The up-down doesn't matter, but I'm just going to change it real quick. There. So to change the mod keys, you use shift and the octave keys. To change the memory pads, you use alt and the octave keys. If you use just the octave keys by itself, it'll just change the note keys. So you can adjust it however you like. And again, the strum pad is nice. Um, for doing guitar sounds, it's amazing to me still how much it sounds like real guitar. Because you can go up or down. And the other nice thing about it is that if you turn these values down somewhat, quick overview of all the modes and uh, keys and we'll get into everything more in depth with uh, succeeding videos I just wanted to give you something to look at real quick so again quickest way in is key plus mod mode and play around with that and if you want to get back out you just hold the alt key press F1 or if you want to switch modes, Alt, and then look at the screen and see which one that you want to go in and play with. Thank you.